every day, hundreds of people flock to the Capitol in Washington, D.C., attracted only by power. They're going to have political action committees mm -hmm. who are unable. Letters or constituency mail. That power has accumulated here over the past 50 years at the seat of government of the most powerful nation on earth. Bill? Bill Hendricks, my staff. How do you do? Glad Good to meet you. Good to see you. How are you? How's it going? What are you talking about? Guns? Hello, this is Warren Richardson. Oh, Mary, yes. What's on your mind? Warren Richardson makes okay. his living by knowing who has power and influence to trade. Get the word. I'll be here waiting for you. He's okay. a lobbyist. Thanks a lot. Bye. The official administration position on this bill, however, is that its consideration would be premature at this time in view of the president. He uh, trades with people like these, members of the House Committee on Agriculture. They make some of the laws and regulations that, among other things, control the food we eat. They are elected officials who have the power to spend billions of dollars of our tax money. It takes all of page two and it takes all of page three. Naturally, lots of people would like to get their hands on that money. That's the kind of stuff that ought never go into the statute books. And I think anybody who is practicing the justice court knows it. Yeah, the way you get common sense administration is by having common sense administration. And I Gentlemen, really feel yeah. like there's more common sense administration in agriculture. Access is all important. And how you gain access. It used to be that there are only maybe a few hundred lobbyists in this town. Now we record up to 15,000 lobbyists, plus ancillary personnel of secretaries, receptionists, and typists. And, uh, the, res and the researchers that go with that, they're calling upon all the uh, law firms imaginable. So th there's a tremendous support base out there for the lobbying effort. You don't have to walk these corridors very long before you begin to realize that the concentration of power in the hands of a few people, however well-intentioned, is a real threat to the freedom of the individual. All right. Of course, Warren Richardson doesn't see it that way. Over the years, he successfully lobbied for special interest groups in energy, environment, wages, and prices. Today, he's arguing the case for another special interest, the National Action Committee on Labor Law Reform, hoping to swing influence his way. Bill goes overboard in terms overboard. of board. Much, much too far. There's hardly a time when the corridors of congressional office buildings are not peppered with people, waiting for their chance to see and influence the elected men at the center of power. ...within that legislation for funds for communities of 50,000 and under the goals of the existing law and certain statutory paperwork requirements are often very unrealistic for smaller communities. The deals made here affect all of us, and sometimes in ways we don't like. But don't blame the people making the deals. They're just pursuing their own self-interest, which may be as narrow as making a buck or as broad as trying to reform the world. We, the citizens, are to blame because we've handed over so much of our lives our personal decision-making to government. And we now find that what government does severely limits our freedom. The leather and wood-paneled official offices of a congressman in Washington, D.C. It's the mecca of those who try for behind-the-scenes influence. The acknowledgement. Weaving his way between special interest groups can be tough for a politician. To stay in office, he needs votes. To get votes, he often has to make deals. Uh, the chances of our party uh, regaining the White House, if Republicans, if the president sends up policies that Republicans can support... It's frequently a frustrating business. So when you have people who are coming in not for purposes of debate and dialogue and discussion on something, but merely they demand their special interest, or their single issue concern. That's where it becomes extremely difficult because there might be an equal number on the opposite side of the coin. Every time I come to Washington, I'm impressed all over again with how much power is concentrated in this city. But we must understand the character of that power. It is not monolithic power in a few hands, the way it is in countries like the Soviet Union or Red China. 
It is fragmented into lots of little bits and pieces with every special group around the country trying to get its hand on whatever bits and pieces it can. The result is that there's hardly an issue in which you won't find government on both sides. For example, in one of these massive buildings spread, scattered all through this town, filled to the bursting with government employees, some of them are sitting around trying to figure out how to spend our money to discourage us from smoking cigarettes. In another of the massive buildings, maybe far away from the first, some other employees, equally dedicated, equally hardworking, are sitting around figuring out how to spend our money to subsidize farmers to grow more tobacco. In one building, they're figuring out how to hold down prices. In another building, they've got schemes for raising prices, the prices farmers receive, or import prices, or keeping out cheap foreign goods. We set up an enormous Department of Energy with 20,000 employees to encourage us to save energy. We set up an enormous Department of Environmental Protection to figure out ways to get cleaner air involving our using more energy. Now, many of these effects cancel out, but that doesn't mean that these programs don't do a great deal of harm and that there aren't some very bad things about it. One thing you can be sure of, the costs don't cancel out, they add together. Each of these programs spends money taken from our pockets that we could be using to buy goods and services to meet our separate needs. All of these programs use very able, very skilled people who could be doing productive things. They all of them grind out rules, regulations, red tape, forms to fill in. I doubt that there's a person in this country who doesn't violate one or another of those rules or regulations or laws every day. Not because he wants to or intends to, but simply because it's impossible for anybody to know what they all are. Thank you.